What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to G-Myers World. We're going to be jumping into week six of the 2019 NFL season, starting off with the Panthers and the Buccaneers. A nice little early game. Uh, it worked out pretty well. I'm going to tell you a couple things right now that's probably going to wow you, but if you've been watching and listening to my podcast over the last three or four years, you would know how I feel about one Cam Newton. Okay, at this point, it seems like it might be the best case scenario if the Panthers were to move on from Cam Newton. Now, you guys might still rage or whatever. I think, you know, whatever. You, you guys might still like him. You might think that he still has something in him. But all that he has in him is a lot of L's. All right. Now, if he's not 100% healthy and he goes someplace else and performs, that has to be a risk that you're willing to take. Same thing what they did with Peyton Manning, pushed him out the back door. Obviously, you can't compare the two. Um, one was a little bit more gifted as far as throwing the football than the other. But I, like I said, right now, I would be taking, I would be willing to take my chances with Kyle uh, Allen and also McCaffrey with the way that they've been playing. We can't really talk crazily um, about, you know, their competition at this point because the Buccaneers, you know, Jameis Winston going to do what he does. He's either going to throw a thousand picks or he's going to be a decent player. We never know what we're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. But I'm going to tell you this right now. You know what you get from Cam Newton. And we've been seeing it over the last couple of years. The dude has been washed since the Super Bowl. Pretty much. He didn't jump into the pile. Now it's over. It is what it is. The Bengals and the Ravens. The Bengals actually started this game off pretty, uh, what did they do, run back a kickoff or something? It was something weird that they did, uh, but we knew they were going to lose the game. Uh, Andy Dalton, I don't, uh, how how is he still a quarterback in this league? It's amazing the dudes that go out there every week, you're like, hold on, that dude still play quarterback? That dude is a terrible quarterback, dog. But again, A.J. Green is, uh, you know, on the sideline uh, for whatever reason, and, um, you know, you're not going to be able to see the same things. It's sort of like if Culpepper didn't have Moss to just throw the ball up every play. He would have been exposed a very, very, you know, long time before they started getting the championship games and getting dominated by the Giants 44-0. Uh, to But that's not what this is about. We're not going to start talking about what the Giants did to the Vikings in that championship game. What we're going to talk about right now is that the Bengals are terrible, even with Marvin Lewis way gone. The Ravens, Lamar Jackson was putting on a show, uh, still passing, still throwing, showing he's a true uh, dual threat QB. Love to see it. Seahawks and the Browns. This was an up and down roller coaster. The Browns should have won the game, but unfortunately for the Browns, Freddie Kitchens is their coach. Uh, and that's pretty much what I have to say about that because if you're running the ball and having that much success, why would you start throwing the ball? However, Baker did look and show signs of life throughout the game, but ultimately a lot of tip balls off of, it's, it's, he's throwing it right, right to his receiver's hands and they just can't catch the ball. Like, I know we had a lot of interceptions based on the stat sheet, but if you watch the game, all of those bum receivers, Bum receivers was just dropping the ball, but ultimately the Seahawks pulled it out, man. And Russell Wilson, man, that dude can make some serious plays. Congratulations to the Seahawks on a clutch win, uh, beating the Browns at home. Saints and Jaguars, you know, it's not going to be too pretty, uh, but Teddy Bridgewater is doing what he has to do, and uh, it's working out pretty well. Minshew didn't have a lot of magic, uh, even though a lot of us are getting used to seeing him do certain things. It's not going to be like that, um, you know, every game. And, you know, Jalen Ramsey not playing, that's a huge thing. People don't realize... When you're able to game plan and know that you have a side of the field that you really don't have to worry about, it really puts a lot less pressure on your, on your defense. Uh, so that's going to continue to go on until they figure out what they're doing with Jalen Ramsey. Are they going to trade him? Like, what's going to happen exactly? We have to figure all that stuff out, and then we'll go from there. So um, I do want to say, you know, as far as the Saints go, Teddy Bridgewater is doing a fine job up until that point where it's going to be, you know, Drew Brees will come back and maybe it'll be his, you know, his swan song. But... You know, it's working out for the Saint fans, so I already know 504, all that stuff in the chat. Who that? Yeah, yeah, you guys getting wins. It's all good. Five and one is definitely not bad after that last season. And you know what's interesting? You might not have to play um who was that team? Who, who do they play? The Rams? The Rams are playing like total garbage. So it might work out that you guys make the playoffs and they just don't. But it is what it is. The Texans and the Chiefs. I gotta tell you this right now, man. The the Chiefs looked like they were gonna run away with this game. Okay? They looked like they were gonna run away with it. And Deshaun Watson just wasn't having it. And at this point, you got to, when, when it comes to clutchness and you're looking at the numbers, I don't think it's far fetched to say that Deshaun Watson is a better uh, quarterback than Mahomes. I, you know what it is? When, when it, I'm, I'm counting the clutchness and the effectiveness of the plays and what they're doing um, in order to make their team win. Now, you know, you, you did get, you, you got your speedster back. Um, you know what I'm saying? With Tyreek Hill and everything like that, he mossed like 15 guys. It was a very, very exciting uh, thing to start the game off. But ultimately what happened in the long run is that Deshaun Watson is just able to maintain the poise and make sure that his team believes in them. And you can see that. I'm not saying that, that the Chiefs don't believe in uh, Mahomes, 
It's just like you know that Andy Reid is going to be a pass first guy. He's not going to do other things. And, you know, you may get a run here and there, but they don't know how to really, like, they don't know how to Carlos hide it and get a 100-yard rush game and stuff like that. They don't know how to really do that. So those things are very, very difficult uh, to kind of counteract when you're playing a game like that that's, like, down and grit, and it didn't work out for them in the long run. But I got to tell you, Deshaun Watson was very, very impressive when, it, when he needed to be. The Redskins and the Dolphins, this game was just absolutely disgusting to watch. It was like watching a Pop Warner team, but like babies though, like right out the womb. It was disgusting to watch, but was it Fitz Magic on the Dolphins? He tried to make a run, but they went for two, which I don't know. Well, I guess that makes sense because they were like, yo, we're never going to win the game anyway. We might as well go for two and see what happens. And ultimately the Redskins uh, walk away with the victory. Then we have the Eagles and the Vikings. Now this, I can't, you guys know how you know vicious I am about Kirk Cousins. I can't say anything bad about this guy. He was winging that ball everywhere and doing whatever he wanted. And who was on Stefan Diggs? That dude is garbage, bro. And another thing, Stefan Diggs could have had a lot more touchdowns, but it was a couple overthrows from Cousins, but he made some unbelievable throws right into the end zone, the double toe tap, Stefan Diggs. They just really, really balled out, man. It was unbelievable because, you know, the crazy part about it is Diggs could have actually had five touchdowns instead of three. But the Eagles, man, I, I don't know. They're probably going to still win the division because the Cowboys just keep choking. But that's another story. We'll get to that in a second. Falcons and the Cardinals. Let's just be honest about that. The Falcons are terrible. They're an absolutely horrific team, and they have been since they lost the Super Bowl. What would, they were down 23, whatever it was, bro. That team is never going to recover from that, so they might as well fire everybody that's there, the staff, um, the janitors, uh, the, you know, just everybody. Just get rid of everybody and start fresh, especially with the head coach, because ultimately you're going to have to make a decision about where this team is going. And do they have talent? Yeah, they do. Uh, they were losing by a lot. They came back, made it close, ultimately lost the game in the end, but... You know, it's something that I think the fans and everybody's just tired of seeing it. They're just tired of seeing Matt Ryan go out there and just do whatever he wants early and then try to bring him back late. And it's just, it's too much. You got to be able to, you know, keep your team in the game from start to finish, at least like make it reasonable. And they're just not able to win. And it's, it's simple as that. They're just not able to make these plays that they need to make. And it's starting to become very, very, you know, it's, it's hazardous to your health to watch them play because you're like, what are you guys doing? But on the other token, Kyler Murray getting his team in position to win the game, man. Look, he's having a time of his life right now. I'm, I, I know he's very, very happy that he chose the NFL over baseball. We'll see how that goes as his career continues to go on. But right now, I, I love watching him play. I think he's very, very exciting. I think that the Cardinals, um, it's the excitement around them that's making them look so good more than the skill that they have on their team. So it's like, it's kind of crazy to really watch it. Um, but I really, really enjoy watching that young man play. And I, I just hope that he goes on to be pretty good, man. Um, you know, obviously there's going to be other players that are going to be running for the offensive rookie uh, of the year, but he's playing very, very well and leading a pretty veteran team to victories where people thought they wouldn't win much. So that's pretty good. The 49ers and the Rams. I'm going to point out a couple things about this, right? The 49ers defense is absolutely for real. I'll give you guys all that. You 49ers fans are going crazy. You're tweeting me, bro. We're back, all that stuff. Congratulations to all you guys being 5-0. and The Rams is my issue, right? Now, we all know based on history, the Super Bowl loser, they usually don't make the playoffs the next year. The Rams are going like right along that route perfectly. But the one thing that I want to point out is about Todd Gurley. After that dude got his money, he's been one of the most horrific running backs. I know that he's injured and all that stuff like that, but I hope he's a very, very charitable person because that dude lucked out crazy. As soon as he signed the contract, he had tendonitis in both knees and his eye sockets. Like, everything just went wild, and there's nothing they could do about it. But in doing that, he helped to make Zeke get more money, and probably other running backs will, but the owners are going to more or less watch it now because of that situation. But overall, the Rams had opportunities in this game, and Jared Goff did not make throws when it was necessary to make them. And that's just pretty much point blank, period. If you can't make those throws, it's not much that you're going to be able to do in those games. And he was missing wide open receivers. You know what I'm saying? Like wide open. It, it, it's disgusting to watch, but... Those are the decisions that the Rams made. The franchise is going to have to deal with it. But I was never sold on Jared Goff. So I don't, it's not like I'm surprised about it. But when I see Todd Gurley on the sideline eating ice and having a good time, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's like, yo, bro, your team is losing wildly. You, you look like you're just having a jolly old time. Like, it is what it is, though. Um, ultimately, the Rams probably will not make the playoffs this year. And we'll see how that goes. The Titans and the Broncos. I don't know what Titan team I'm going to get week to week, man. I really just don't know. Um, 
It was very, very wild to watch it, but the Broncos are actually winning since the owner came out and said that he's willing to trade everybody and he doesn't care. So maybe that's the kind of tactic that most teams should use because they've been actually playing pretty well since then. When you start telling people you're going to take their money away, you see what happens. Cowboys and the Jets, dude is fresh off mono. I don't know where he got it, how he did it, if he's nasty, whatever. But I can tell you this, the dude knows how to throw the football. Sam Darnold just straight dominated them. Dak might have cost himself a lot of money losing this game for different reasons. Now, he can still show that poise, he can still show that character, all that stuff, the leadership, but he can't, like he just doesn't know how to lead them to victory. And that's pretty much what it is. The determining factor with the Jets was all Sam Darnold. That's pretty much what it was. If you watch the game from start to finish, they were motivated more by this young man than anything else. And you got to see it early and it lasted throughout. Cowboys did make a push. Ultimately, the last play, he got he tries to go for the two-point conversion. Witten acts like he's getting held, but honestly, it was just a good play. The dude did do a good acting job, though, the Jet defender. But ultimately, the Cowboys should have won this game and they did not. It doesn't look good for Dak Prescott. Uh, the Steelers and the Chargers, finally. Um, I want to say this, Juju Smith-Schuster has not been the same wide receiver since Antonio Brown has not been there. And also, James Conner had an unbelievable game. Shout out to him, man. A good recovery coming back and trying to make the best of a bad situation with the way the Steelers have been playing. But ultimately, we don't know what we're going to get um, out of them week to week. You know, that quarterback situation is really, really bad. So I don't expect much from the Steelers. Like, I don't expect playoffs, if you guys are asking. But the Chargers are a whole nother story. They've been extremely disappointing. Uh, Melvin Gordon holding out, coming back, not getting anything. Phillip Rivers having 19 kids in two seasons. It's a lot of things going on that they're going to have to work out. But ultimately, they are very, very disappointing. And I know a lot of people thought that they would be doing a lot better at this point. But it's still early in the season. People are going to make uh, recoveries and teams will start to get better. But you just can't lose games like this in prime time. You just can't. And that's pretty much the whole gist of what happened on week six, 2019 of the NFL season. Remember, you guys can download me on the go, G Moswell podcast on iTunes, Android, iHeartRadio and Spotify. Definitely get it in your headphones while you're, you know, doing your workout on your way to work and all that good stuff. Be sure to subscribe. Click the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, all at G Myers World. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love.